I'm Keith. And I'm Emmeline. And you're listening to the Creative Education Podcast. Joining us today is Helen Brew. Helen is the Associate Principal Flautist at the Royal National Scottish Orchestra and is heavily involved with their outreach and community projects. Well, thank you very much, Helen, for joining us this evening and for coming to chat to us on the Creative Education Podcast. And we're really happy to have you here. And thank you for taking your time to, I know you've been busy teaching all day today, but um, if you would like to just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself to get started. Sure. Well, first of all, it, thank you very much for inviting me. It's, it's, it's wonderful to be here and it's, it's really exciting to be able to, to talk to you about all the things that you're doing and talk, to, talk a little bit about the education work that I've been doing and kind of my journey to where I am just now. So I am the um, Associate Principal Flute of the Royal Scottish National Orchestra, a job that I have held for a long time <laughs> too, too many years too many years to disclose right now um, <laughs> um and, and prior to that i um i i did the conventional um music journey pathway in that i you know i was very fortunate i had um flute lessons actually supplied paid for by through the county council and that's actually you know so one of my kind of big big drives is is to enable young people to kind of have that experience as well because you know we're, music's really kind of um not so present at, at the moment and it's, it's kind of been taking mm -hmm. out of education and so i was unbelievably fortunate to, to have that support um because i don't come from a particularly musical background so I, I, my, my, my flute lessons were supported by the county council and I was very lucky I played in, you know, the schools orchestras and county youth orchestras and we did masses of touring and uh, really, and, and, I, and at the time I, I really don't think I appreciated what I was doing and what I was, mm -hmm. where we were going and what we were learning, but I was very, very lucky to, to be able to go and visit these amazing countries. Um, and then I, um, I went, I studied at the Royal Northern College of Music for four years, had fabulous flute teachers, and then um, went on and did a postgraduate course at the Guildhall School of Music and Drama, where I then went on and started freelancing in London and, and loved it, actually. But um, I was then very fortunate and I got my job up here at the Royal Scottish National Orchestra and I've been here ever since and been um, up here doing lots of... Um, teaching at music colleges and lots of teaching at grassroots level at home with with young people and lots of community and outreach work so um it's Fantastic. been it's been yeah it's been long and varied yes. can i it's ask very, then um, why flute why, why was that the first place you know you say that it was it was paid for by the 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 council so did you have a choice or or was flute what was offered? Well, actually, I mean, it's a funny story, really, because my the, the very first teacher I had um, did said that I had the wrong embouchure to play the flute and that I should play the clarinet. And that's a bit of a red rag to a bull for me. <laughs> and, and, and in actual fact, I think that's kind of what it, when you go into music, I think you have to have that, that, that determination and that drive. So he'd said it, uh, it didn't suit me, so it was going to suit me. So, um, <laughs> and, and here, here I am. I, I remember he said to my dad, well, she'll, she'll just enjoy it. She won't go very far. And again, that's another, <laughs> well, I'm going to prove you. I'm going to show you. Yeah. So he, Quite he, right. Yeah. And do you think you've taken that um, idea, Helen, into now into your teaching to kind of model yourself to not be like that, not to just say, well, oh, they'll enjoy it, but they won't go very far. Well, I think I've realized and I have noticed that actually, is, and, and this is why I take my hats off to teachers in, in schools and all teachers, it's, it's very important what you say to young people and they, mm -hmm. and they, they listen to you and it's not just flippant comments and it's, and it's very powerful 
what 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 how how they how young people view teachers and and it's such a responsibility to be a teacher and I, th I think teachers have an incredibly hard and challenging job on their hands and they do it brilliantly. They absolutely do it brilliantly. So okay. um, it's, it's so important how we treat young people and, how, and show them respect at the same time. So uh, I'm very agree, careful with yeah. how, how, I work, how, I, how, I, how I talk yeah. with young people. I, I still remember at music college, I went to music college a year later than as kind of at normal whatever normal is and I remember because of that therefore I was obviously a year older and I remember my flute teacher then saying well that's it your fingers will never move fast you've you've passed the, the stage where you will be able to play fast and I've never forgotten it no. so now if ever I'm playing something in the orchestra and it's very fast I've got this little well you're not gonna be able to play that because because you have a doubt in and, your head yeah 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 and we don't need that in our lives actually no um, enough of our own without other people's in there too yeah, totally mm -hmm. it's, it's it's so important and I think as teachers as well we're always learning how to be with people and to learn from the people that we're we're, we're working with as well so you know, it's to always just to be aware of how you're presenting, seeing what's going on in the room and working with what you have in the room. I think that's that's so important. If you and that's really hard when you've got a classroom full of young people and one's going that way and one's going that way. Yeah, um, and everyone's got different pressure points and things going absolutely. on and stuff outside that you don't know about and all these other things. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. And that yeah. makes me it makes me think a little bit when you're saying that, Helen, about what we spoke about we've spoken about previously about appreciating everybody's musics every every different kind well you know if that's slow that's acceptable and you know if this is fast and and I wondered if you'd like to speak a little bit about how you do that in your teaching you know and appreciating everybody's contributions and musicality well, it's, yeah it's about it's about accepting where people are isn't it and mm -hmm. and reaching in and enabling them to reach their potential yeah. and I, th I think I think that's the key isn't it is 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 allowing them to develop at their own speed but but recognizing that actually if you push a little bit they'll go a little bit further but sometimes if you push they're not they're going to be reticent and, and hanging back and again that's that's that that takes energy and time and, and again often in the classroom it's very difficult to do that but it is about and, and I think that's actually what you know so I, I, I during the summer I was doing a um, national children's orchestra online digital oh which was fantastic and we had master classes with the young people and one of the one of the young people said to me how come you've been in your job for so long <laughs> and you know, I mean <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 actually, and it was a really interesting question and and I answered it by saying well do you know because actually a lot of the work that I do is not solely playing in the orchestra because I do the outreach work and I do my teaching and and every single time I go in to teach a lesson it's different it's never the same it's never you never regurgitating the same information you are delivering the same information but you're always looking for different ways to deliver it because every single person is unique and you have to work with you have to work with that not your expectations as in my expectations as a, as a teacher obviously I have on certain levels I have expectations but it's always about being fluid and being able to change and I think that's one of the things that's so important within education and working with young people is a, is for them to recognize that there isn't just one path there's lots of paths for us to travel and if you if you're going down one path and the door gets closed a little bit it's okay to 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 change the direction or maybe we'll just try the door a little bit for a little bit longer but if we're not if that door's not going to open then let's 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 try another let's try another path and i think that's it's very important to to allow young people to to to, to learn that actually and, and, and I always remember my my eldest son at, at school, and when he was in primary school, he was in P4, and um, he was getting a probationer teacher who looked about 
12 years old <laughs> so, so I was like oh my goodness what's he going to do with a room full of 30, 30 young people but you know he was the best teacher that my son oh. had and um, he was just yeah. brilliant because he was so passionate and so enthusiastic about his trade his craft and mm -hmm. they were doing one project and it was about and it was about artists and and he brought into the room he bought five different pictures for, with different from different artists and he said to the class we're going to pick one of these and we're going to study it and they picked up they ended up picking a dali picture the melting clocks Mm. Yeah. And he said to the class, he said, I'm so pleased that you've picked this picture because I don't really know very much about Dali. And that means we can learn it together. And I think that's so empowering. It's really refreshing. For, isn't it? I just think it's yeah, just it's really wonderful. refreshing. Just it's a recharge, um, isn't it? You know, when you when you get to experience a teacher like that and, and, and there's a back and a forth, there isn't a lecture. Then, yeah. then you know the class is allowed to shape what happens in that classroom, and there's a sense of ownership about their own learning too, which surely translates into learning more. Totally, but then there's some responsibility, isn't there? Absolutely, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. And actually, isn't that? I think that's what is very important about music and uh, and music making and being and working together in teams, is that you you need to take a responsibility for what's going on around you, and so music isn't just about learning your trade it's so much more than than learning being a facilitator it's about working in a team it's about building up self-confidence it's learning how to navigate your instrument and um it's just so much more and, and that, that that's why i think music is so powerful and especially within in the in the education system yeah. i think there's a really interesting bit in there about um when you're talking about learning your craft because i always feel like when you learn your craft as music you also have to learn everyone else's because you know I, I can't I'm a drummer by trade and I, I can't be the drummer without understanding why I can't play that really loud note over that thing that the clarinets are trying to do or why I can't push the speed because the flute's going to have a really horrible run if I make it go that fast you know there there's some really interesting play in there that you yeah. wouldn't get in other subjects because of the team sport thing yeah, totally. You're, you've got to be aware of everything that's going on around you. And that's another, isn't that another wonderful life trait to learn, actually, is to be aware that there are other things going on around you all the time. And that you, actually, you might want to play it in a certain way. But if you play it like that, that means that that person can't play it the way they want to do it. So actually, it's a negotiation of actually how you're going to, how are you going to work yeah. together? actually and that and, and, it, and it's at every single level isn't it? i mean even, even you know i was talking about actually one of my lessons the other day because um i was talking to one, uh, a flute player who was in a quint a flute quintet and they're having to practice over zoom well that's mm. we know really hard, that's really hard. Yeah. and then they can then they come together in a room so and they have to be socially distanced so they can't hear and it's very difficult to see and you know it's all of that and she she was just getting frustrated because there was no communication in the room no one was looking and no one was looking because it's all very new to everybody they don't they don't kind of know how to work in that room and i just we were just talking about how to navigate that situation because you need to be respectful but at the same time somebody needs to be able to say in a respectful manner well i think we need to do it like this why don't we try this can we try this? And if that doesn't work, maybe we should have a little look at this. But it's a, it's definitely about learning all the time how to adapt in situations, yeah. and, and the music allows you to do that. Oh, definitely. That combination of music and life skills, or music is life skills, is is just really interesting. And all these new skills that we're we're having to learn now for things we used to take for granted because we're all stuck in different rooms and and we do that in everyday life but in music especially all these things we can't do now that we just miss um mm -hmm. so much compared to the way we used to do it mm -hmm. well you forget, you, you forget or you don't realize actually how much you just take it, took it for granted do you I mean, I mean, somebody said to me, um, we were talking about the concerts that we, we were do, we're doing, and obviously we're, we're recording to camera now, everything. And they said, don't, don't you miss the audience and that immediate connection that you would have? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we get, every, every time we get to the end of a performance in, when we're recording it digitally, there's just silence. You know, normally there would be 
clapping and you'd kind of feedback you'd smile and you'd turn to your neighbor and say well that was that wasn't very good or god that was good wasn't it? that was so exciting but there's none of that and it's 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 all about that connection music is all about connecting with people and i think that's what's so hard about this digital world is we have to connect we have to learn how to connect with 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 people through a machine rather than actually personally connect with people and that's very that's very difficult yes mm-hmm. definitely oh no i was just going to say even the um thought of somebody you know tapping their foot you, you know and they're tapping can't the tempo it. but you can't you you don't know that that person yes yeah. yeah, even tapping their foot it's very tricky yeah. 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 And it, then it's off putting if you're seeing it on a Zoom that somebody's tapping, it's actually not bearing any not relation time. <laughs> yes, to what you're yeah. seeing. What you're yeah. seeing. Yeah. Yeah. But that's the other thing, isn't it? With all of this, we've all had to learn how to record and how to wear a heads, you know, have a click track going in your ear. And, and, and then, you know, Keith, you were saying you're learning about editing and, and, and all of that. It's, it's just this constant learning. And I think with music we're always learning so in a way we've kind of been given those tools to for adaptability and flexibility and and that's another reason why i think it's it's so important that it is kept within the education system so 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 it's about learning all the time And, and you know you know at my ripe old age i i feel that i have learned so much recently and I've learned so much from young people and it's um it's actually really refreshing and inspiring to be to be part of that and be to be allowed to be a part of that it's a privilege I feel to to be able to be part of that I had a a really interesting conversation with someone um recently who who was talking about that and, and they were saying you know as creative people, we are creative. So we find creative solutions. That's what we do all the time. Mm-hmm. It's our bread and butter. But actually, it's really difficult to almost be penalized for that because now that we're having to be creative about how we do stuff and people just assume that we will be because that's what we always do. And then there isn't necessarily a credit for the fact that you've managed to get around the problem because people expected you just to get on with it. Um, and it's that really interesting, that, that tug, um, that give and take of how, of how people really feel about that because they want to be creative, but they also don't, you know, they feel that, that people should realize that's what they're doing and not just have not noticed because it worked fine, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. It just really highlights that how important creativity is. But even thinking about from what you said about your son's teacher, that was a really creative idea to, you know, have the, and it's just inputting all of these little bits of creativity and probably, well, I don't know, actually, probably if it comes more naturally as musicians and creative type people, but I think that's what's of real importance in education. And Totally. And actually, whilst you were saying that, Emily, and I was just remembering that we did a creative project in our local high school a few years ago and we had uh so they were s2 and s3 so quite um self-conscious year group um anyway we would we would we were working doing a creative music project in conjunction with a with a poet and so they had written some some very powerful poems and actually that the subject was bereavement mm-hmm. um so they had each written some very powerful the subject matter on, on on that and we had created some soundscapes and taken some of the words they had chosen some of the words that they wanted to use within this soundscape and so I said to one young um, person why don't you be in charge of, of 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 presenting those words within the soundscape and I said we picked you know I said how many words would you like to say and he he chose three and then um, I said, right, off, oh, right. So here we go. So we got the soundscape going, and he looked and he said, well, well, when do I start? And I said, well, you can start whenever you like. Well, h- how how many times do I say it? And it's you can say it as many times as you like. You can say it as fast as you like. You can say it as slow as you like. You can say it as loud as you like. You can say it 
as quietly as you like. And he was completely paralyzed with fear at this mm -hmm. vast amount of... Um, so many options, yeah. yeah. So many options, actually. It was like, it, he just wanted to be told what to do because that's what happens within yes. his yeah. normal He wants the correct life. answer. Because in, because in maths and, and science, there's a correct answer. And, yeah. and we've structured yeah, yeah. our curriculums in that way now where there is an answer and you're either right or wrong and you'll get a test score that tells you how many were right and how many were wrong. And creative subjects are more subjective than that. They don't work that way. Yeah. There is no right. There is no wrong. There just is. Yeah. But interestingly, no. life is like that. You know, life doesn't have correct answers. And spending years and years and years of your life being told there's a correct answer all the time and then being spat out the other end and there isn't an answer that's that's crazy actually and and that's where these creative subjects would be so important to being able to self-regulate yourself in that adult world where there is no right answer and you're responsible for all your choices Absolutely. What is it? It was Sir Ken Robinson, who's very sadly died quite recently. He said, education is killing creativity. Mm -hmm. yes. It's very powerful, but, yeah, yeah. but to some extent, I, 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 I believe that it is because, you know, even, you know, in that classroom, you could see that there was just, there was just a, a well, how, how do I do this? It's programmed well, that way already. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to know that and then I do that and then I'll do that and then it'll be fine then it's done and that I kind of talk about that um, with my teaching as well at, at, at the music college because often you talk about um, a way to play a, a particular um, aspect of flute playing and quite often they want to go away and do that and then come back and I say yeah that's right now you've got it but it's like, mm -hmm. it's not quite as simple as that because actually I can give you all the tools to, to, um, to, to change the color on the flute, but I can't tell you which of those tools is going to help you to make it, make it sound the best because your mouth is different to my mouth and mm -hmm. um, your windpipe is different. So it's, it's about allowing them to be creative and and and, ex and experiment and explore yeah. and develop okay. and, and that's quite scary yes. for, for, for some people mm -hmm. and it's just when you were speaking about what ken robinson said as well you wouldn't if you had given perhaps those three words to a four-year-old or a, a free you can imagine it would have been a completely different you know the three words I mean, would have been everywhere fast slow. my, yes. my five-year-old would have jumped right in yes he'd have been all yes. over that my five-year-old would have yes. been spitting them out as fast as they could go you know yes. yeah yeah then, but then how much fun you could have had with that though yes it, mm -hmm. wouldn't it have been just so it would have just been ex so exciting yes. and that's isn't that the other thing with with um with music as well it is that we can we can we respond to what we have and you must find that emily with with music therapy you you work with whatever the, the young people or whoever are, are giving you and you respond to that i mean i think that that must be it's such a, a wonderful thing to be able to do actually yeah. to to respond to them yeah and it, then it's about being almost awakening that inner child as well and being playful and having that freedom to, yes, be creative and know yeah. you're right. And how did your, how did the um, student respond in the end? Did he use the words and did he build up the confidence? He, to... he, he did. It took him a while. It took him a while. Mm -hmm. But then he actually quite enjoyed the power of being in charge mm -hmm. of, of doing that. <laughs> and you could see he kind of, he wasn't a particularly tall young person, but you could see him kind of rising up to this, yeah. well, it, I'm in charge here, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I can do this, I can do that. And it was, it was so empowering to see him kind of open up and just say, I've got this, I've got this. It's such you know, a difficult I, age, isn't it? To, it to, is. to try and do that. And I remember um, being that age and I remember I was playing in a jazz band at the time and um, my, my skill set at that age was very like sight reading driven. I, I, you know, I, if you gave me 
music I would play it exactly as it was written but if you got to the bit that said improv it would all fall apart because that's when the rules don't exist and you can play anything and I remember playing in this jazz band rehearsal and then um, we got to whichever end of the phrase and the bar said fill and uh, the band just stopped it was it said solo fill so with the, the, everyone else stopped and I remember the uh, the conductor saying well well what what are you going to play there then and I just played nothing <laughs> because there's too many options. Well, what do, what can you possibly play? And so, you know, I think it's really important for, for teachers to, because we all have moments like that. We've all been 12, you know, so you, you need to really think about how that felt and not just, not just try and encourage the participant to do whatever it is you're asking them to do, but really understand how that feels and, mm-hmm. and say something, you know, share a story about you at that age or whatever to help to help push that on because it's it's yeah. such a big concept that open blank, blank. we all we do it now even with like blank, blank page syndrome, syndrome when you have to write something, something for the first time and you, you sit there for 10 or 15 minutes before you can get anything on the page and once you've got something on the page you'll probably change it anyway but it gets you going you know it's, it's a bit like when you give a classroom um a, a class full of kids percussion instruments and they've never really explored percussion instruments all they want to do is hit it as hard as they can and as loud as they can mm-hmm. and and quite often teachers are like no 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 you, you mustn't do that you mustn't do that and it's like no 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 let them do that yeah let them explore, explore that mm-hmm. and and generally it will quiet itself down it will it's self monitor sometimes sometimes it doesn't <laughs> <laughs> And, and that's fine too. Then you can kind of step in, but it's like, you no, know, let them explore this 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 thing that they've probably never seen before, never been able to to hit, or and and, the, or, and then then you know once they've got that out, then you can really start exploring what these different instruments, the sounds that they can make, and that's then very exciting because you've got them right in the putty of your, you know, they're they're, they're putty in your hand, aren't they? Yes, and that's almost similar again, isn't it, to your young man with the poems. It's He'd got the control and he had the freedom to be able to do what he wanted, and then you're reining it back in ever so slightly. It's empowering, and then being able to be more reciprocal with things. It's yeah. the, um, and then learn to use skills. your power. Totally, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. totally. Yes. I, I remember the first time that I went to work at our children's hospice, I'd never worked in a children's hospice before. And I, I mean, I was nervous. I, was, well, I wasn't nervous. I was apprehensive because I didn't really know what I was, what, what was going to yeah. be happening there. And I remember speaking to a friend of mine, a music therapist friend of mine, and she said, Helen, just remember, as soon as you open the box with your flute in it, they're going to be really excited to see this silver, this bright, you know, this really yeah absolutely and you get it out and you put it together and you blow across the hole and suddenly you you make this beautiful sound they're just going to love it and she was absolutely right and I think that that's one of the 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 challenges I think sometimes for for professional musicians is we forget what a gift we have and actually that we can share with people and and what what that brings to people as well and I and I and, 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 you know, going back to talking about digital, that's, I think, what, what we as orchestral musicians and, and every, all musicians, we're missing that, 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 that immediate connection and that response and that kind of, that, that visual of, of actually that what this, that these sounds are actually doing with, with people. It's, very, it's, it's so powerful and we need to remember that, I think. Oh, yes, absolutely. No, just thinking about, you know, and it is, it's a wonderful gift to be able to share with people, but also about trying to um, break down those barriers of elitism surrounding yeah. musicians. Yes, it's not just there's the RSNO and, you know, we, we can watch it. If we're very fortunate, we can go and watch. It's about allowing everybody to make music. Yeah. And, and I think those outreach projects are so important. Visiting the hospital, allowing everybody to be able to engage. It just makes things so much more wholly inclusive, I think. For and that's what you were saying, Helen, before about it, about it changing in education and that bit being removed and it, it, it not mm-hmm. being as present anymore. And, and I absolutely agree. I think, I think we have reached a point where music lessons 
have sort of become a luxury product and mm -hmm. it's it's not it's, it's not, not you know yeah, i absolutely, I absolutely don't, don't think that's, that's where, where it should, should be, be. um no, it not. should be back in that classroom it's it's how how can we well we need to persuade the, the people with the money but it's how it's it's it's, it's but but it's what can we do now to 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 inject into the community that 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 love and that that kind of recognition that it, it's 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 not an add-on music is not an add-on it's it's part of of what what we need to be doing and what we need to be sharing and i think for me it is it feels a privilege that i can i can perform on a saturday night and and at the highest level, you know, the brilliance on the platform. And during the day I can have been working um, in the children's hospice and the brilliance of the music that we're creating there is very different from the brilliance. They're both brilliant, but they're quite different. But, but I get the, 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 the connection because it's so, it's more personal is so powerful because it's, it's so close. And, and on the platform, it's slightly more removed. So when this young person at the NCO online said, how come you've been in your job for so long? That's why I've been in my job for so long, because I've, I've, I've got, I'm, I'm very oh, lucky. Yeah. I, I've, got, I've got lots of different fingers in, in different pies, and that keeps, keeps it all alive. It keeps it quite scary sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But it keeps it alive. And, and, uh, and, and, and makes it so exciting. But that's that's really interesting, that idea that, especially, you know, with that um, campaign during lockdown that, that hit about retraining, which I will not talk about too much, but that idea of um, it, it takes, takes however, however many, many years, years to train, train to, be to be this or train to be that, but you, you never, never stop training to be a musician. It's never. a lifetime journey that you continue never. to learn forever, you know? Yeah, and, and that's why it's very difficult. You know, I would never now go for an audition. I would never win a job now because the music students coming out, they're just absolutely brilliant. But I have, you know, I have 30 years of orchestral experience that they don't have. So, but it's, you know, it's, um, it, it's, it's sharing that and it's respecting, you know, that there are young people coming out and they're absolutely brilliant. But at the same time, they respect that there's somebody with all that, all, all that wisdom of, of 30 years but I tell you what, what one of the things that's um, been really interesting for me in lockdown is and this is how I met Emmeline is that I've 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 started the journey of learning Makaton and it's been it's been terrifying <laughs> and it's been so so exciting um, and 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 just really refreshing to be with um, people who want to connect and communicate, and that is their sole drive. That's all they want to do, and it's and and so now, kind of my drive is how do we, how can we bring Makaton more into the orchestral world, more in, and, and allow these amazing communities that are using Makaton. How can we share that? Yeah. And and maybe marry marry that that more, and you know I've been to lot I've been to lots of these sessions where you go to practice it, and you know for for weeks before I'd be practicing them before I went in because as a musician you you go in and and everything's right, you've got to be right, but what's been so um, eye opening and and refreshing for me is to go in and. These people, they haven't spent hours. I mean, they know basics, but they're there to learn together. And it doesn't matter if you, you are right or, or if, if it's not all right. It's okay to learn it together. And that's so empowering. And so um, I can't really think of the right word to explain why it, in, my, in my world of professional music on the platform, it's just got to be right. There isn't any room for error. And not when you're using the new skill of Makaton is there room for error. But there's an acceptance of it's okay. Yes. It's okay for it to be like that. Mm -hmm. And I think and that's that also, yeah, it's part and parcel of a lot of the 
Makaton users as well might not have the, um, you know, we can all maybe do a hello sign, but maybe they all look different because everybody moves their arms differently and not everybody can open all of their fingers up. And, but it's just accepting that every, everyone's contribution and communication is there, but it's different, yes. But then it would be, it would be no different than the way that we all speak the same words in different accents. It's, mm. you know, that's, that's what we do. As in, the, in the British Isles, that's what we do anyway. We have so many accents yeah. and we all speak the same words, although we have, you know, slang words that are different or whatever. We, we speak the same language, but it's so different. And you could, you could step into a city somewhere and not understand because it was so different and yet it would be the same words. Absolutely, absolutely. That again goes back to what we were talking about earlier about respecting and just accepting people for who they are and not wanting or needing them to be anything else. And it's the same in the classroom, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. you have every day they're going to be slightly different because like you said, Keith, you don't know what's going on at home or what they've had for breakfast or maybe they've had no breakfast or what's going on, you know, out in their world. And it's about working and being with people and, and having space for people. And, and I, I think it's maybe, I hope maybe we've all learned a little bit more about that actually during this, this, this time of, of, of needing to reconnect with people mm -hmm. and have time actually to, to, to be with people. And listen, just to listen. Mm -hmm. So how does it differ for you um, when you're teaching something in community as opposed to when, or an outreach program as opposed to when you're teaching in a classroom or does it not? Because I think that would be really interesting. I think sometimes there's a thought of, you know, that's, that's prim and proper classroom and, and this isn't. And so is there a distinction or should we come at it from, or do you think we should come at it from the same vantage point that's really really interesting question because <clears throat> uh, four years ago the orchestra started working with a group of brain injury survivors in Dundee from Tayside Health and the first time we went in um, obviously we used percussion we were using percussion instruments and they were completely I mean they were the most amazing group of people to work with they were just they were awesome um, and they were totally in awe of the three musicians that were there because they were from the Royal Scottish National Orchestra and there was a very much that, which was lovely. It was, it was really lovely. <laughs> but what I, what I said to them was, actually, in this room, we're all equal and we're all musicians because we can all make create some kind of sound on, on, on the instruments. And, you know, we, we, we worked with them for 10 weeks and, and we created some amazing music and actually some amazing vocals as well, which was just fabulous. The next time we went in, I felt very strongly that we, I wanted them to experience not just having an instrument that they were hitting, but that they could explore what, what types of different sounds could they make? Mm -hmm. And so instead of giving them a different instrument each week, they, it's almost like they specialized on the instrument. Mm. And it was like, how can we, <clears throat> how can we maneuver this so that they have a feeling of, of, of pride and, and respect for what they've learned? which is the same as I would have when I'm learning my instrument. And for me, well, it, it didn't matter what level it was. It was just to see them learn and be, and, and actually um, this is another reason why this group was so amazing was because, you know, with all that they've had to endure, they're quite happy to explore it. They, they don't have an expectation of what brilliant is. Brilliant is just being there. Mm -hmm. So, so they had that freedom to allow themselves to explore it, and the and the the joy that they got from making from creating a sound, and then exploring it and seeing what they could do with that sound, do with that sound within the group, was was 
awesome. I mean, I, I can't really think of another word. It was just amazing. So, so do, do I change how I view what my expectation is? No, I don't think I do. No. But I think that's great. I think that's how yeah. it should be. I just, I just don't, don't think, think it, it always is. is. I, don't I don't think everyone, everyone teaches, teaches like, like that because we yeah. get caught up in curriculums and and E's yeah. and O's and, um. and and league tables and and you know us us guys that come from a creative background, our brains don't necessarily think that way. But if you come from a mathematicians background or a or a mm-hmm. you know science background, then maybe your brain does think that way and. And, you know, I've, I've worked with lots of community groups in, in the way that you have as well, where, where I, I really enjoy that kind of teaching. I, I think it's because it's, it's not teaching. It's it's no. enabling someone to learn something. It's not teaching. Totally. But people don't mm-hmm. don't do that in a classroom all the time. Sometimes the classroom is the classroom. And it's it's I think we need to kind of break those walls down a wee bit. It's so hard. Though, isn't it? How do you do that as a teacher when mm-hmm. you like you said, Keith, you've got you've got you've got deadlines you've got boxes that need to be ticked you know you've got you've got the curriculum you've got all of that how how do we you know what what I'm what I'm saying is very I mean it's lovely and it, but sometimes it's quite idealistic because there isn't the space and the time to do that but it's how do you how do you bring that into the classroom even though there isn't actually the time for it it's, I mean, it's very, and that's why, you know, when we started at the beginning, that's why I say I take my hat off to to classroom teachers. I think it's, it's such a challenging job. And there are so many fantastic teachers out there doing doing a remarkable job for our young people, actually. So if there's a teacher out there who's sit, sitting there thinking, I'm not musical, this is this is not my wheelhouse. But they're also walking that tightrope thinking, I want to be more on that side than on this side. I want to do some more creative learning. I want to include my class so that there's a mutual respect and they're getting to shape what's happening. How can they go about that as someone who feels like they're not skilled as, as a musician in inverted commas? Where can they start? Well, I think I, I think it's, that's a really interesting question as well because I know when we've done our um, primary school projects, we have a teacher pack which gets sent out to the teachers and then we invite them to come and spend an hour with a couple of musicians and we talk through the pack. And very often the teachers come, that when the teachers come, they're absolutely terrified. Yeah, I've experienced that from teachers too. I think it's scary because it's a whole language music, isn't it? So it's hard to, to get into. Yeah, so it's, to, it's how do you dissect that and, and actually show them that actually it's really very straightforward because it can be anything. It can be on any level and it can be as simple as you have a drum and you hit it and actually you just pass that around the classroom. And if, if you can give them the confidence to just try and actually, I, I guess, you know, I, I go back to these all, these all the other things that I was saying is that if you can allow yourself to be vulnerable in the classroom, it's very powerful because it's such a sign of strength, really, isn't it? Because if you can learn with the young people, then that, I mean, that's a gift to the young people, isn't it? Yeah. And what you said about that Dali painting and and what that teacher said Mm -hmm. is, is almost mind blowing. That's, that's what you want. That's, that's the teacher you want for your child who is saying, I, I don't know this, but I want to learn it with you. That's a really powerful yeah. message in a classroom, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I also appreciate that it's terrifying. It's, it, well, it was like me starting with the Makaton. It, it's terrifying learning it. And, and, and it's just that kind of that first kind of hurdle. If you can just allow yourself to do that, then it, then it kind of opens up such a, such a massive world for everybody. I mean, I've, I've learned so much from from that that one i'm just gonna go i'll just see what happens i'll just press the button and then it and then it just it all just happens and and you just i guess you just have to hope that 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 teachers will feel that they can take that step Mm -hmm. what you said about um it being okay to make a mistake i think that's so powerful if you can create that atmosphere in your classroom where you can you can know nothing about music and then when you're teaching it you can get it wrong and you can laugh about it 
you know, yeah, if yeah. there is such a way of getting mm-hmm. it wrong, if it goes the way you didn't want it to go or whatever, but you can laugh about it and share that with your students, then they're not going to be scared of making a mistake either. Absolutely. And then that, all those other things we spoke about where people are frozen with too much choice and they don't want to get it wrong, like all those things start to sort of dissipate the mist thins a bit because you're saying, well, I make mistakes all the time. It's fine. Yeah. You know? Yes. Mm-hmm. But, but you're right, Keith. It's about, it's about learning to... Uh, allow yourself to just enjoy it rather than it have to be it have to be right it's fun to do it it's fun to try it and it might work and it might not but that's okay it's fun it's and and actually and that's what I've learned about the Maxon it's fun it's really fun and just learning is fun and I think we forget, I mean, you know, like I said, I am a ripe old age. And I think I'd, I had forgotten how, how much fun you can have to learn something. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's, it's like learning how to use Zoom and Teams and Google Docs and, you know, all of that. <laughs> it's like, ah, how does it work? But actually, I mean, I mean, young people just do it all the time, don't they? And they've grown up with it. So they just expect that. And and that's that's the tragedy isn't it about creativity is that if they aren't growing up with being allowed to, to be creative then how 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 can we how can we bring that to them at a later 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 time and that's that that's challenging it's hard really hard and i think that that idea of the thing that's important being the outcome is what can be destructive because actually it's not the outcome that's important it was the process it was the yeah. experience of doing it that was the important bit because yeah. if you think about the process of, of somebody making a painting if you think about a visual art it's maybe more obvious that the process is more important than necessarily what the outcome was going to be um but it's the same with music and it's the same with other expressive arts and it's the same with language and and all other subjects too it's it's that process bit and that's the bit that should be fun and engaging and if it is then people are going to remember it yeah. absolutely and i think it, it, that's interesting isn't it as well keith because that's what's been so difficult about digital recordings that are going to be streamed as concerts because in a concert it's just you just do it and it, and it goes and if something goes a little bit wrong but it doesn't matter because it's not recorded mm. and yet when we're recording in it now we have to patch afterwards because it's going to go out and, and it could be replayed and then it can be seen. So you, so whilst I think it's brilliant that we can put, put concerts online because we can reach so many more people now, you, you lose that. Where's that spontaneity? Where's that kind of um, that, that, that creativity and, and taking a risk and you, you might not take the risk because if it doesn't work, then it's going to be captured on, and you don't you don't want that, so you don't take the risk. So it's not quite at that kind of, you know, heart heart racing moment. And that I think that comes through, and it's very difficult in a digital performance to create that. But it is about you know, and then you go back to this. Well, I've got to get it right, but that's not really what live music it is becomes about. a bit robotic, doesn't it? I mean, it's it's yeah. you know, it, it becomes so digital that it's almost you know robotic because you, yeah, you're making right. it absolutely perfect and and creativity yeah. isn't perfect it's ever changing that's that's the yeah. point isn't it yeah 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 i was just thinking we've just we've just recently done a, a halloween concert with um children's classics up here and and i thought it was a, a just a brilliant um digital concert that they put on and i think the success of it was because they they well we were putting on a, a brilliant concert but also they were, they were very aware of trying to connect with families, knowing what it was that families needed at this time of not being able to go to the concert hall, not being able to listen to live music, not being able to experience, you know, that joy of connection in the concert hall. And they really worked on the digital output that they put on to make that connection and I think it really worked because they were aware of what it was that they were trying to, to, to who they were trying to connect with. And, I, and that's, I, and, and, and maybe now actually for musical performances, actually we, maybe we won't ever go back to what we were doing before because actually we've really had to look at who are we trying to connect with? What are we trying to do? Why are we trying to do it? 
are we reaching all the people that, that want to, to, to hear it? Actually, do, are there, does everybody know that they want to hear it? How can we reach out more to and, 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 and connect more people to this amazing gift of, of, of music? And, and, I, and I hope that art sectors, again, it's, it's very idealistic. Is it idealistic? I don't know. Can we have the space to look at, 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 at opening up and being more inclusive and more diverse and equal and equitable? I, I, hope, I hope we can. Yes, I hope so. I think that's a brilliant vision to have. Helen, yes, yeah. an idea, yes. And I don't think it is too idealistic. I really think people should be embracing the arts and making things more accessible for everyone, just as, as you're doing with the concerts and including Makaton and the nursery RSNO concerts. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. It's, it's, and all these things that you're talking about are things that society says it wants. So, Absolutely. you know, it wants them as a whole. So if, if, you know, if we can just make the connection that we can use an artistic sector to reach that goal, then who knows where we would be? Absolutely. But isn't that what, where your um, new create way pathway is so exciting because you are gifting what you know and what you've learned to other people so they can a enable and reach far more people, which is why it's so exciting that you are putting this resource out there for people to be able to move forward and, 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 and showcase the art. I think it, it's just, it's wonderful. It's very, it's so exciting. Yeah. It is very exciting. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's all those things we've been talking about, all those learning new things. And, and, you know, I remember being absolutely terrified when I discovered I was going to have to build a website from scratch that somehow had um, <laughs> a membership aspect and was able to password protect things. And, you know, that's, I've never done that before. I've absolutely never done that before. So, um, you know, we just continue learning all of us all the time, don't we? It's just. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's part of being in a team though, isn't it? I mean, I know the cliche is there's no I in team, but you are always recognizing other people's assets. And, and I'm sure you asked many people about uh, to get some advice on how to do it. It's, it's about, well, so-and-so is really good at that, so I'll ask them. And, I, and then so-and-so is really good at that, so I'll ask them. And then I'll bring it all together. And I, can, I bring this to it. And if we put it all together, it works really well. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that and, and that again, that's another uh, trait that you learn with with um, with music and 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 yeah. working in you know wind bands and ensembles and orche uh, string orchestras and 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 percussion groups and it it's all it all brings it all together, doesn't it? But that great long list of things just goes to prove that there is something for everyone because that great long list that you've just made covers so many different things for so many different skill sets that there is no reason that you can't be connected with one of those things somewhere. Even if you think you're not musical, there is something in there. If it's, if it's voice, if it's percussion, if it's woodwind, if it's brass, if it's, you know, a jazz band or a concert band or a rock group, there, there is something in there that you should be able to connect to that should get you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody, everybody has something to offer and it's about giving people the space to allow themselves to offer it and to recognize that they have something to offer. I think that's, um, it's, it's funny, I was, um, with our digital concert series, we have musicians front the concerts. And I did, I did one this afternoon. It's the first one I've done. Um, so, um, and I, we, I was talking about, um, we're playing Dvorak's Eighth Symphony. Um, at the end and, and I was talking about what I love about playing Dvorak music is he writes so well for all the instruments within the orchestra and he gives each instrument you're not just part of the texture you have a line a, not necessarily a solo line but you have something to offer throughout the symphony or, or not necessarily in every symphony but in many of the symphonies he, he uses the voices of individual players to, to 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 say something and um that for me is very powerful because it, and he writes so well for the instrument there's never this oh my goodness that's really difficult how am i going to play that it's all about lyricism and um and, and the musicality of it and i and i and I, I i finished off by saying it's a gentle reminder 
that we all have something to offer. Yeah. And, and, and it's, um, and we do, we all do, we all do. I think that's it's a lovely it has analogy. Been, yeah. It is, it's lovely. And it's been so lovely to talk to you um, oh, and to lovely. hear all about what it is that you do um, and, and how you're managing to be inclusive and, and to deal with stuff in a digital way and, and all the changes that that has made. Um, I think it's a really representative view of, of a lot of people out there at the moment. So thank you so much for well, taking the time to talk yes, to us. Thanks. No, thank you both so much. It's been, it's been wonderful to talk to you and um, lovely to, to chat. And I wish you every, every success with your amazing new project venture. I think it's just absolutely fantastic. So I thank you from all the, all the teachers yeah. out there are going to love it and use it so thank you thank you oh, exactly. thank you it's thank been wonderful you. thank you very much thank you to helen for joining us and thank you for listening and if we've learned one thing today is that everyone has something to offer when it comes to the arts